Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Amarili Yigas Rivas. I'm the program manager here at Arts for LA, and uh, I just wanted to get a couple of housekeeping notes out of the way um, to kind of keep the webinar running smoothly. Um, if you're joining us now, and um, you, uh, if you could do us the favor of muting yourself either on your phone or on your computer just to reduce the background noise that we're getting uh, on the webinar. Uh, so that you can hear all of the speakers who will be joining us today. And then also, if you have questions that come up uh, while we're going through um, the webinar, you can type them into the chat box, and at the end, we'll have time for a question and answer session. We'll go through any of the questions that are in the chat box, uh, and then uh, after we're done with those questions that are submitted via the chat, we'll open it up uh, and unmute the call uh, so that everyone uh, can verbally jump in with any additional questions at the end of the webinar. Um, so, I think that takes care of everything. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Arts for LA's Director of Programs, Jennifer Fugatuli Jones, and she's going to kick us off. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to an informational session and application walkthrough for the 2017 2018 Activate Arts Advocacy Leadership Training Program. On behalf of all of us at Arts for LA, we are so excited to have so many prospective fellows on this call. Today we'll be going over some details about the program and reviewing the application step by step. We'll also hear from some Activate alumni about their experiences in the program as well. If you have any questions during the webinar, please, be, uh, please write them in the chat box as we'll be opening up the questions and answers session at the end of the presentation as the Braille mentioned before. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, we also want to encourage you to share about every stage of the Activate Fellowship program, even applying for it. We'll be posting using the hashtags, hashtag ActivateArtsLA, hashtag ActivateArtsEd, and hashtag ActivateCulturalPolicy. And you can connect with us with Arts for LA on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So before we get started, I just want to let you know who you're talking with today. My name is Shannon Fukutomi Jones, and I'm the Director of Programs at Arts for LA. And I'd also like to introduce or reintroduce our Program Manager, Aurelie Niguez Rivas. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's get started. So what is Activate? Activate is an arts advocacy leadership development and training program designed by Arts for LA. We recognize the importance of local leaders and seek to empower these individuals with the skills, knowledge, and expanded network to affect change in communities across greater Los Angeles. Over the course of nine months, participants learn from top leaders in social justice, education, cultural infrastructure, advocacy, communication, and policy. Each session features speakers who deepen uh, the fellow's knowledge and empower them to take action. Activate is composed of two tracks, arts education and cultural policy. The arts education track will explore topics such as education policy, data, research, communication strategies, and leadership development. Participants in the arts education track will work to support their local district to expand, improve, and support arts education for all students. The arts education track is also part of a strategic collaboration between Arts for LA and the LA County Arts Ed Collective, which is, LA County's, uh, which is the LA County Arts Commission's initiative dedicated to making the arts core in K-12 public education. The cultural policy track will explore topics such as government infrastructure, public art initiatives, communication strategies, and leadership development. Participants in the cultural policy track will work to support their city or municipality to expand, improve, and support arts and cultural policy in the, uh, and, and infrastructure. Each Activate Fellow represents a specific local community, either a school district or a municipality. Currently, Activate Fellows come from a diverse range of communities around greater Los Angeles region. The long-range goal of Activate is to recruit, train, and mobilize arts advocates in all 81 school districts and all 81, 88 municipalities in Los Angeles County in an effort to grow our arts advocacy network and strengthen our collective voice. And that's where you come in. The application for the 2017-2018 the program is now open. The deadline is Sunday, July 16th of 2017 at 11.59 p.m and selected participants will be notified by Friday, September 1st. If you are accepted into the 2017-2018 Activate program, you are expected to attend all program sessions, design and implement an advocacy project, 
more information about that from our alumni later, <laughs> and meet with your elected officials, document your project, and participate in evaluation and storytelling. As I, as I mentioned earlier, Activate takes place over the course of nine months. The first session is a joint session between Arts Education and Cultural Policy Fellows. There are two more joint sessions in the winter, and all the fellows get together to celebrate and culminate in May. In between those events, fellows will meet with their tracks at sessions tailored to the needs of each program area. You can see the schedule on the slide right now, and we also have the schedule available on our website for reference. Great, now I'd like to hand it over to Abril, who will be leading us through the application process. Okay, so if all that sounds good and you're interested in applying for the program, um, you can uh, um, submit your application. Um, so it's really important that when you submit your application, all of your information is correct and the application is complete um, because we can't piece together different submissions of the application. So we won't actually review any applications that aren't complete from start to finish. So the first step in the application is uh, going to our Become a Fellow website. Uh, here you can find all kinds of information about the program itself, uh, including the application timeline, benefits of the program, guidelines and eligibility, and information about the different uh, program tracks. If you uh, scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see the click here to apply link that will take you to the actual uh, Activate application. Um, so once you click on this link, you'll be taken to our Activate application online. Um, again, this has more information about the application and the program on the first page. And these two blue links, uh, arts education application questions and cultural policy application questions, will actually take you to a PDF of the two different applications for the different tracks. Um, each of the tracks has uh, basic uh, information questions uh, for all applicants and then specific questions for either arts education or cultural policy applicants. So be sure to review the questions before you actually start working on your application. You can download them and look at the specific questions. So this is the application uh, questions that are unique to arts education applicants that have to do with your experience or interest in advocating in the school districts that you're affiliated with uh, or have relationships with. And uh, the cultural policy questions uh, have to do with your experience or interest in advocating in your local community uh, or municipality. Um, so the, that's the main difference between the two applications, uh, uh, including uh, in addition to all of the other basic biographical information about yourself as an applicant. So um, once you review those, you can click yes that you've read the information and, and uh, agree to uh, the application and then you'll actually get started. Um, so like I said, the, the first couple pages of the application are your personal information about you, your name, uh, your employer. If you're not, uh, if you're self-employed, you can indicate, indicate self-employment and your title if applicable with whatever organizational affiliation. Um, your home address, just so that we know where in the county you reside. Um, email address so we can contact you and phone number as well. Um, gender and other demographic information will be asked. Um, uh, about you specifically, as well as uh, how you have heard about the Activate program and if you have any previous involvement with Arts for LA. So if you're coming to us fresh or if you've been involved with our events and programs before, we just kind of want to get a feel for um, how long uh, you've been with us. And this actually has no weight on your application whatsoever. So um, it won't affect your application if you're brand new to Arts for LA and this is the first time you've had any involvement with the organization or if you've been with us for five years and have come to every single one of our events and programming. Um, this question just is not weighted in the application, it's just for us to know who's, who's coming into the program. Um, the next uh, part, so you'll choose which of the application or which of the program tracks you'd like to apply for, either arts education or cultural policy. And depending on which one you choose, this will drop you into the applic uh, application questions that are specific to the program track that you're applying for. Um, for, uh, the, for each of the tracks, you'll be asked to review the list of sessions. Um, so this will give you the dates and times of all of the sessions that are scheduled for the entire run of the program through May. And you'll be asked to agree to attend all of them. If for whatever reason you're unable to attend a session and you already foresee that, if you have a conflict um, 
uh, in a given month uh, for a particular date, you can let us know um, and that will be considered. Um, but for the most part, we like to have fellows commit to attending all of the sessions uh, for the program. Uh, the next part has to do with choosing uh, which uh, area you will represent. So this is specific to arts education fellows. As an arts education fellow, you'll be asked to select which school district or charter network you're going to represent as a fellow in the program. If you don't know uh, which school district you fall into, uh, you can go to this lavote.net slash precinct map website um, to find the information. Basically, you can apply to represent a an area in the Activate program uh, of your choosing. Um, you can uh, apply to represent uh, an area where you reside or where you don't live, but have some sort of existing relationship. So for arts education fellows, if for example, you're a classroom teacher and you live in Inglewood, but the school that you teach in uh, is in Pasadena, then you can apply either for uh, to represent Inglewood or you can apply to represent Pasadena Unified School District. That choice is up to you. Um, it will depend on what you have in mind for the advocacy initiative you'd like to launch or continue and uh, what kind of existing relationships you have with the school districts that, um, that you're considering. So again, if you don't know which school district is affiliated with your address, you can go to this lavote.net um, slash precinct um, website. If you go to that website, you can look up uh, the school district, you'll have to change this drop down menu um, to direct map lookup by address. Once you do that, you'll be able to uh, look or plug into your into the search engine your home house number and street name and that will spit out the results for all of the uh, districts that that residence is associated to or that address is associated uh, with. Um, and so uh, the arrow indicates that the address we put in is part of LA Unified School District, specifically Board Education 4. Um, if you are applying to uh, be a fellow within LAUSD, we'll ask you to specify which of the seven Board of Education districts, uh, the school site uh, or network that you're looking to represent um, is affiliated with, just for clarity because LAUSD is so big. Um, if you're applying, if you're applying as a fellow to represent a charter school or charter network, that's also an option and you can select it from the top of the drop down list. Um, and once you select the option, you'll be uh, given the chance to name the actual school or charter network that you'll be working with as a fellow. So this is all specific to arts education applicants, um, but there's a similar process for the cultural policy um, program. Uh, the only thing is that this is now for cities or municipalities. So for the cultural policy track, um, all of the, you, you can represent any area within LA County, um, but it must be within Los Angeles County. So this can be uh, independent municipality or council district within the city of Los Angeles. Again, you'll be asked to select from the drop down menu. Um, if you don't know where the, your address lands in terms of council districts, you can go to the same uh, precinct map at the lavote.net website and put in your address and find um, the city that's associated with whatever address you're choosing. So this can be the address of the house of your home address where you reside or the address of whatever organization you're affiliated with or um, have some sort of relationship or interest in um, advocating for that area. Um, so again, if you are uh, choosing to add, be a fellow within the city of Los Angeles. We'll ask you to choose um, which of the LA City Council districts. Oh, I'm sorry, these slides I got mixed up. So um, you can choose a city or you can also choose an unincorporated uh, area of Los Angeles. There are a number of areas that are not official municipalities of the county. So that's also an option um, if you would like to uh, be a fellow representing an unincorporated area. Um, if you are choosing to uh, be a fellow representing part of Los Angeles City, um, you will be asked to select a specific council district. If you don't know which council district your address corresponds to, you can visit this website, City of Los Angeles Neighborhoods Information, and put in your address or intersection for either your home or um, whatever other uh, organization or site that you would like to be 
uh, working with or in or around uh, and find the information for the council district um, for that part of Los Angeles City. Um, so once you do that, um, you'll be asked to select the correct council district from drop down menu and for applicants for LA City, we're also asking that you select a second district if you have a second choice, um, just because LA City is so large and we get so many applicants from LA City, we, we want to make sure that we can accommodate everyone um, in either their first or second council district choices um, as we figure out which fellows are going to present which areas. Um, after that, for both arts education and cultural policy fellows, we'll ask you to uh, identify your primary relationship to the area that you want to represent within the program. Uh, again, this is completely subjective, up to you. Um, we just like to know what your connection to the area that you're going to be advocating for is. Um, with uh, your primary, secondary, and tertiary connection. So primary being the, the role that you most identify with uh, in relation to this area. So either a parent, community member, if you're an artist or teaching artist, a district administrator within the school system, a classroom teacher, a student, a city employee with the municipality or council district, an arts administrator for an organization that serves the area or whose office is located in the area, or a nonprofit administrator um, in non-arts uh, organizations that are located in the area, a program sponsor or donor to any uh, organizations that are in the area, or some other role um, that you can specify. Um, and this is just to give us an idea of, of your relationship to the to the council district and so that we can see um, what uh, your role is and how you see yourself plugging into the arts and cultural landscape of the community that you're going to be representing. Um, after that, you'll be asked to submit the survey questions that we highlighted before that are unique to arts education or cultural policy. Um, and uh, please note that these questions uh, you, can, you cannot come back and edit them once you've submitted the application. So we really recommend that you download the PDFs of the, of the application and look at them beforehand and type out your responses uh, in a Word document or some other word processing file so that you can paste them into the application um, once you have submitted all of the other questions. Um, once, once that's done, uh, you will, so that those are the arts education questions, these are the cultural policy questions. Once that's done, you'll actually submit your application. When you click finish and submit, or finish and send application, um, we will uh, send you over to the Arts for LA website and um, your application will be complete and submitted. If you would like to email your resume as a supplementary part of your application, it's not required. But if you think that there's something in your resume that will help us get a better picture of your current role with your organization or within your community and uh, would give us a better picture of, of what kind of work you have done or would be doing as a fellow, you're welcome to submit your resume to the email activate at artsforla.org. If you have any questions about the application itself or about your, the application status as we go through the review process, um, you're welcome to uh, contact us um, at the same email, or you can call the Arts for LA office at 213-225-7580. That information is there. Um, so this is the last step before you submit the application. If you would like to make any edits before submitting, be sure to click the previous button, because if you click the back arrow on your web browser, it might reset the form uh, of the online application. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I'm going to hand this back to Jennifer. Great. Thank you so much, Abril. Uh, so right now we're delighted to hear from two of our Activate alumni, Jeremy Kwan and Alina Boja. Both Jeremy and Alina participate in last year's Activate program and are joining us to talk a little bit more about their experience in their action project. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Alina Boja. Hi, everyone. My name is Alina, and I was a fellow in the cultural policy track for this year. Um, so let me get started telling you about uh, my own project. Um, okay, so I work for the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts Foundation, um, which is in City District 14 on CSULA campus. 
Um, so I was, my first question when I was applying for this was, which track should I choose? Because I do work for a high school, which um, seems to tie in most directly with um, arts education. But my own personal interests were more um, geared towards public art. Um, so I was confused about like arts education versus cultural policy. Um, but uh, I ended up choosing cultural policy um, which was the right choice because I am like my own personal project did end up being more geared towards um, public art and like uh, city like city policies like towards um, things outside of the arts sphere. Um, so that's what I ended up going with. Um, as for geographic area, that was that was another question that um, was just kind of all over the place for me. So I'm not from Los Angeles. Um, so I didn't have like a hometown that I could immediately identify as being like my geographic focus. Um, and I worked in two different places. So I work at Locks on CSULA campus, but also um, downtown. Um, and I didn't have, I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted my project to be, if it was going to be like a public art project. Um, so like I didn't have like a real connection to any of the places that I like lived or worked. Um, I just moved here from San Diego, which is like the first uh, point on my map there. Um, and I, but I had heard about um, these wonderful young artists in Pacoima doing um, really community oriented mural work. Um, so I applied to the Activate program with my geographic focus being Pacoima, hoping that maybe I could um, help them in their efforts to like be a bridge between the community work that they were doing and um, policy work, um, finding out if I could have like helped in any way. Um, so I applied with Pacoima being my focus. Um, like halfway through the program, I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it out to Pacoima. I don't know who to reach out to. Like I wasn't, I just like wasn't sure. Um, I switched my focus to um, City Council District 14, which is where um, I work for LOXA. Um, and then, so I met someone during the process, during the Activate program, um, who came into the program at like a sim with similar goals in mind. So my focus um, with like public art was uh, like focusing in on the immigrant community and immigrant rights issues. Um, that's like one of uh, the issues that I personally champion. And I met this girl in the Activate program that was also also came in with like the same idea of uh, using like a photo portrait um, project that um, highlighted like immigrant communities in Los Angeles um, and specifically her, she lived in Altadena um, and I lived in Pasadena so when we spoke about this project we were like it would be perfect um, to have some sort of like exhibition like that in Pasadena. Um, so I end up um, doing my like you know focusing my project in Pasadena. Um, so it was the geographic area was like quite a jumble for me, um, and I jumped around a lot. But um, the Activate program has like flexibility for that, so that was good. Um, go to the next slide. Uh, okay. Um, so one of um, the things that I learned pretty quickly on with the Activate program that has stuck with me and I think will be um, like just very useful knowledge for the rest of my career is um, was one of the things that I learned at one of the very first sessions um, where they had all of these like expert panelists come in that have worked in or, like arts and cultural policy for a long time and they just had amazing knowledge to share. Um, and they had worked not only here in California, or not only in Los Angeles, but like in California as a whole, like some of them had worked for the California Arts Council. It was really useful knowledge that they shared. Um, but sitting down with one of the ladies um, that worked for um, a county supervisor here, her name was Janethea Hayes, and I think she was a deputy for arts and culture. Um, um, I, yeah, so I came into the Activate program with kind of like, 
a, a nebulous idea of how policy worked, of how like the policies governing arts and cultural affairs in the city worked and in the county. Um, I wasn't sure like where they came from, how they were created, like what kind of input was needed. Um, sat down with this lady and I just like straight up asked her one of the most basic questions that I had, which is like, who writes these things? And she was like, well, I do. Um, and she just kind of like told me the process of like, well, I just like have these meetings. I go to town halls. I like keep my ear to the ground and I sit down and write these things and they get approved. Um, so it, it was just, it, it, it was really good to know that like the work that gets done is just because people like sit down and focus on it, you know, um, and listening to Sophia talk, the executive director of Arts for LA, um, is also like a great example of that because she, anytime you hear her speak, it's like she just does the work. And that's really important to know because by the end of the, this program, like the people doing the work will be you. Um, and that is like a very empowering thing to learn at the beginning of this program. Um, Another thing that I that I learned about just uh, the arts and cultural sector here in Los Angeles um, was that no one works in a vacuum. Um, everyone is sharing resources, um, and this includes people. Um, so even though we all like serve our own niche purposes of like whatever our arts organizations are focusing on, we're all working towards this common goal of making our communities better through art. Um, and the people that you meet in this program and the skills that you will learn, um, it, like, will become essential in doing that work. Um, the networking in this program is so valuable. It's just um, everyone that you meet here will become a partner in one way or another. Um, and that's, yeah, that's invaluable. Um, it will keep these partnerships going for long after. Um, this program. Uh, okay. So just to tell you a little bit about uh, how my project came along, uh, how it originated, and how it's going now. Um, I came in with no idea what I was going to do. Um, no idea other than um, knowing that I wanted to focus on immigration and immigrant rights and um, like uplifting immigrant communities. Um, so I, I came in only with that knowledge um, and I met Lorena, who was a girl that lived in Altadena and had this idea of doing like a photo portrait project of immigrant communities. Um, so I kind of partnered up with her um, to, you know, they continue this project. Um, I one of the things that furthered that project was um, speaking to Christina, who is um, one of the program consultants for Activate. Um, I highly recommend if you can um, have a one-to-one -one meeting with her about your project. That was very useful for me um, because she connected me with um, resources that are going to be really helpful in moving forward with my project. For example, um, she connected me with uh, Ines, uh, this lady who is already working on a project called Proud Mexicans, which is um, a, like a project that is very similar to the effort that I was that I was thinking of embarking on, but specifically for the Mexican community. Um, and when I met with her, it was just like this great synchronicity because she herself is a Mexican immigrant who lives in Pasadena, which is where I was going to focus my project. Um, and that just kind of fell into place. Um, going to meet with her going forward. Um, and Christina also just like connected me with, um, she just let me know about these organizations that are doing like great work in the immigrants' rights sector. Um, so now I have an idea going forward of like, I'm going to partner with um, Ines from Proud Mexicans, going to try to partner with um, uh, the Center for Humane Immigrant Rights um, in Los Angeles um, 
to try to put an exhibition together, partner with the city of Pasadena to try to put a public exhibition together in the places where this immigrant community lives. And um, I've also gotten ideas for funding partners and uh, I have a plan moving forward when I started off with nothing at the beginning of this program. So that was great. Um, is there anything else? No, okay. That's it. Yeah, so Wonderful. thank you. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you so much, Alina. Uh, right now, we're going to switch over and introduce Jeremy Quant, who is one of our cultural policy fellows. Uh, Jeremy, are you unmuted? Jeremy, are you with us? Hello. Great. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, so arts uh, education. And there's my mug. I didn't see my, my photo, my profile for the, uh, for the activate. Um, so, okay, so great. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Abril and Jennifer, for uh, having me as one of the representatives for the Arts Education Fellowship, or activate. And so let's uh, continue uh, with the next slide. Uh, so... So my name is uh, Jeremy Quant, and my uh, company is Dot Red Art Tours. Uh, and so we do tours, uh, art tours in downtown uh, in Los Angeles, uh, where we go to art galleries and art spaces and museums and talk about art. Uh, we and also do uh, workshops. And what I really wanted to get out of working with Activate, so I, I pretty much came in with a plan. Uh, I know I wanted to create a, uh, or facilitate tours with schools um, uh, to, to be in their curriculum um, and, and, and do programming uh, tours to, to educate uh, kids of, of all grade levels about their community more and more specifically the arts community that's around them. So, you know, I did have, you know, an understanding of what I was looking for, but I had no idea uh, how I was going to do it. Uh, you know, where was the funding coming from? How do we actually integrate ourselves into the curriculum? You know, who do we talk to first? Is it teachers? Is it principals? Is it um, city council, you know, what are, what are the loopholes uh, and what are the obstacles that I need to uh, get over to make this, this happen? So that was sort of my initiative going into the program. You know, I, I knew very little about the academia world uh, in terms of, you know, what needed to be taught. Uh, how, you know, how these things would function, um, you know, inside of school, outside of school. So, you know, being included into the Activate Arts Education program, I was given so many assets and tools to work with uh, about, you know, the, the structure, really, of, of academia and what it was like working with you know, most of those heads. So from, from the level of a teacher, you know, what is the position of a teacher? What is the position of a principal? Um, you know, what's the position of a community leader? So, you know, those things were really important for me to, to understand, you know, coming, coming from uh, being sort of a, a community, you know, tourism uh, company to be involved with education. So, uh, so being in each of the the the, uh, the meetings, you know, I connected with, like I said, principals, advocates, artists, teachers, and I got so many different perspectives as to how I could attach myself into um, the schools, into curriculums where where these could actually happen and they can function. You know, because there are so many things to take into account. Also, was um, was transportation. You know, and transportation still is is something that I am tackling. 
uh, even to this day, but I've, I've gotten much farther than I was before I started uh, the program with Activate. So it has been just uh, truly valuable as, uh, um, uh, you know, as previous conversation um, with Alina was saying, you know, meeting everyone, having all of these minds to, to help support you in, in what you are doing, but also just support the arts community in general. Uh, so it was really fantastic seeing all of the perspectives, seeing what people are doing, and, and it, it brought so much inspiration to me uh, to, to want to continue uh, this, um, uh, this journey for bringing tours to, uh, to different schools in the LA County. Oh, and to uh, be specific about the area that I covered, uh, so I was in the uh, LA City District 2 and 5, and the City Council District I attached myself was uh, District 14, Council District 14. So I was, so <clears throat> I come from kind of the historic core of downtown. I worked with uh, the Downtown LA Art Walk doing programming, so that's kind of really actually how the tours came, came into fruition. Uh, so I was very familiar with the downtown landscape. And, you know, pretty much from there is just how do we expand? You know, how do we work with more schools outside of downtown uh, to bring kids not only to downtown, but, you know, even neighborhoods uh, that are close to, to their community um, and, and really highlight those uh, very beautiful, cultural, rich landmarks that communities really uh, should know about um, that can can really help create an identity for those communities and uh, and, and really brings a much larger preservation for for the arts so that was <clears throat> again what I was uh, really after um, so one of the many tackles uh, was you know funding um, not only how do we get into the program but how can this actually you know be funded um, and so, you know, I went to one of the Activate um, events. It wasn't one of our meetings, but it was one of the events where, again, we talked to, there was a, a panel session. Uh, there was someone who was uh, the head of, of uh, LACO, um, and, and she talked about, you know, Title I funding, and, you know, these were for, for schools that are in need of, uh, of, of support for like field trips um, and they also connect with the, the school buses so the school the the buses get funded because those buses are pretty pricey when when it comes to transportation and travel and chaperones and all that so that was one uh, one outlet that I could uh, go towards and, but the other was actually later on down the line when I met with the executive director of LAUSD, Rory Pullins, um, which was an absolute honor. And if any of you guys uh, get a chance to meet him or just check him out, he is a, just an incredible, uh, inspirational person. And so, so we, so there was a meeting with him, and he let um, us know you know, some of the education fellows, a specific group that was wanted to connect with the LAUSD um, community. And he, he let me know or let us know about one of the programs, which was um, Arts Community Network or a, a community arts partner, which are organizations like LA Opera or the uh, Gene Autry Museum or a theater company. So, you know, all of these are are organizations that help to enrich programs through schools, um, through field trips. And, you know, so there is a program that they're looking to expand upon um, where they, you know, help to support uh, these community partners uh, to build programs for, for schools. So, again, these field trips, these workshops, whether bringing artists to the schools or bringing the schools to uh, the the program or to the um, institution or organization and so that was kind of like my aha moment that hey you know we could be a part of the community arts partner network 
and um, you know create sort of a, a budget that would you know satisfy what we needed on our, our end to you know to have the workshops and to have the tours to, to take you know the, these kids around to these different areas uh, and and as they've been they've been walking tours if you look at some of the bottom photos um, you know we do these walking tours so no more than like half a mile to to different places like I said galleries um, art studios uh, museums or boutique museums um, and then we also have workshops and also murals so uh, so I'm actually in the process of going through the the uh, uh, the procurement with through LAUSD for 2018, and uh, so we can support you know I mean as far reaching as LAUSD, which is pretty far reaching. But right now we're specifically in downtown, so we are going to highlight uh, or connect with the, the schools. Um, uh, that are you know that are close to the relationships that Dot Red has, uh, but we're going to you know have workshops and these tours to you know highlight the the community that is around the schools and these students, um, so they can enrich their understanding of their community and and creativity, critical thinking skills, uh, things of that nature. Um, and so so let's actually continue to the next slide. Because um, that's actually what what I designed um, at the end. Uh, next slide. Uh -oh. Hello. Okay, great. Sorry. Um, okay, so so this is what uh, so what we, we designed. So there's there's two programs that. Um, that that we we have so one is the you know history of visual arts for downtown so it's a the discussion of the mural and the landmarks that's into downtown uh, and then the second one is the art of the artist which we we go to art studios and art galleries and we talk to the artists themselves uh, and then we also may do uh, workshops and and so and those programs connect specifically with some of the uh, the curriculums in, in in the school. So, for example, you know, one of the curriculums there's you know the visual and performing arts standards. There's the history and social science standards. So those um, those underpinnings are highlighted in the tour, which makes a, a really great case for a teacher to say, oh, this is perfect. You know, I can teach the students you know, about lines, line work, and then we can do a tour and we talk to an artist that is, in, you know, an illustrator. And we talk about, you know, their work and we connect it into what they're learning right now. Uh, so that was, that was really, really helpful to understand, you know, through the Activate program, you know, what is involved, you know, I mean, really from A to Z. Uh, I think the Arts for LA did a really great job in explaining so much of that uh, to how, you know, each organization uh, or each program could be tackled. Um, and there's so many resources around them. So I felt it, I was supported from the beginning to, you know, make this happen. And I uh, am, am, yeah, just so thankful that I, I was uh, able to be a part of the Arts for LA program. I did apply the year before and I didn't make it, so I'm super happy that I made this one. Um, so, you know, they, they are real and they are very passionate about what they do. And uh, I think, you know, you guys uh, coming into this are going to find a lot of value uh, into this. You don't have to know what you're looking for, uh, but if you do, it, it does make the the process of searching that much easier on you um, and you know you know what what to look for when you do absorb the information because it, it can sometimes be a little overwhelming um, but all in all it is uh, yeah it's, it's incredible it's incredibly helpful so uh, do I have anything else that I want to say 
awesome. Huh? Well, no. really, thank you, thank you so much, Jeremy. It was such a pleasure to have both you and Alina on the line. And um, I think it looks like we're, we're wrapping up. We're a little bit early today. So we're going to wrap up the webinar. Um, if you have any information, if you have any questions about the program or the application process, please, please make sure to contact us at activatedartsforlay.org or call our office at 213-225-7580. Um, and we'd also love to continue to stay connected with us. So please make sure to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for more information about uh, Arts Berlay and about Activate in the program. Um, so as a reminder, the applications are due on Sunday, July 16th at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. So if you have any questions, please make sure to get those in. We'd love to hear from you and hear about uh, your process and uh, look, any questions that you have about the program. So Brill, do you have anything you'd like to include? I think that just about covers it. If we uh, have anyone who's with us right now uh, that wants to ask a question, we can go ahead uh, and address those now. We just got a question from MJ Brown on the chat. Can we bring in other organizations that may be doing what I'm thinking of doing? Um, that's kind of up to you. Um, it depends on how you would like to structure your action project. If you want to build a partnership with an organization that you already have some connection with, um, you're welcome to work uh, in tandem with that organization. Or if you um, would like to reach out to an organization that you think might be doing work that would align with yours, uh, we can also um, help you build those connections. And uh, there might be other fellows in your cohort that have connections to organizations doing work that is similar to what you have an interest in. Um, we also had another question about how many fellows are chosen for each cohort every year. Um, the, the two cohorts um, for arts education and cultural policy are between 40 and 50 people each uh, for a total of about 80 to 100 fellows for the entire uh, cohort for the year. So um, if you are on the arts ed track, you'll be working with 40 to 50 people who are also advocating in the arts ed side of things. If you're in cultural policy, you'll be working with 40 to 50 people who uh, are advocating in the cities or municipalities. But again, there are joint sessions where we bring the two cohorts together. And so on those days in those sessions, uh, you'll have the, the chance to branch out and cross pollinate between arts education and cultural policy with the complete group of uh, 80 to 100 fellows. Any other questions? You can also feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question verbally uh, if you don't have access to the chat or the chat's not working uh, for you. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, th hi this is MJ, AKA Miss Barbecue. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Hi. Hello, hi. what's your question? Um, my, my, my question is that, um, the organization I was thinking of working with has an annual event. Um, it's already passed, but um, it's something that um, I worked on this year and we're thinking of doing it next year. Would that be something that I can fellow to work on this project or is it something that's ongoing throughout the year? Um, that, that also is kind of up to you. Um, we have a lot of fellows who come through the program with something like that in mind, a larger um, project or event that they're working towards either themselves or in tandem with whatever organization they're affiliated with. And um, basically the action project can be anything from uh, launching something like that and having that be the end product to um, just having the first step uh, done. So if you have an idea for um, changing something in the programming of that event that you're describing uh, as part of your action project, even though the event won't happen until later, um, your action project can actually be taking those first couple of steps to incorporate uh, that into the event whenever it happens down the line. We actually have a number of fellows who, who do something like that. And you know the advocacy work doesn't stop once you're done with the Activate program in May. Uh, it continues on. And there are fellows who have um, a supplemented programming like that at later dates or who have launched programs like, like, like that, um, art shows and events and festivals. 
um, and productions that happen uh, way beyond uh, the end of the Activate program, and we get invited to go to those too. So it's <laughs> nice to see that work culminate um, beyond the nine months of the program. So looks like we have a question from. Oh, wonderful! Absolutely. So it looks like we have another question from Andrea Gutierrez. Um, I don't work in directly in arts admin or arts education, but I'm a writer and I've been involved in other ways. And it's a field that I'm working to transition. Does it hurt or strengthen my application? Uh, no. The short answer <laughs> is no. <laughs> um, the program application is not. Uh, we're not looking for folks who necessarily have experience in arts administration or in cultural policy development. Uh, it's really based on your interest in doing so. Um, so if you come in and you're really interested or passionate about um, finding a way to build those connections and, and make that transition and, and bring that sort of um, perspective or programming into the school system, then uh, we'd like to have you yeah. <laughs> and we can support um, you with information and resources and connections um, to facilitate that work mm -hmm. uh, for you. So it doesn't strengthen or hurt your application. Um, basically, we want to see that you're passionate about and <laughs> engaged in the community. Um, the other thing I will mention for people who have this sort of question of, of whether or not a particular track or the program would be a good fit, there is flexibility within the program. So if you come in in the arts education track and feel like it's not a good fit, there is the option of switching over into the cultural policy track um, if, if we determine that, that that might be a better fit. That's something that can happen in the selection phase based on what you describe in your responses and what we see in your resume if you submit one, or that can happen once you're actually in the program and are attending the sessions. And if you are attending the sessions and you think, hmm, this is not quite useful to me uh, given the arena that I want to be working in or the project that I have in mind, um, we can sit down and have a discussion and see um, where you would fit best and how to get you the resources that you're going to need for whatever initiative you're launching. Mm -hmm. And to Andrea, I would say this is a perfect program for you. I think one of the fantastic things that Activist provides is meeting that network of people who have like-minded people who uh, establishes fantastic partnerships. We have a, a, a lot of stories of people who have met, like Alina, who have met in the program and have created partnerships and have gone on to create amazing events and programs in LA. So I, I would suggest that this is a perfect program for you to get started and create that network. Absolutely. Great, so it's about 12.55. I think, um, I think we don't have any questions for the remainder of the time. But yeah, if there's no one else that has any questions, we're happy to let you go five minutes early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we wanted to say a big thank you to Elena Borja and Jeremy Kwan for joining us as alumni fellows. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. And again, please reach out to us if you have any questions about the PROW program or Arts Early in general. Yeah, and as a reminder, the applications are available online on our Become a Fellow page, and the deadline is Sunday. July 16th at 1159 PST. Also want to give a big shout out to Sophie Bridges, our program Yay! development intern who helped us um, pull together the, web, the webinar and the communication surrounding the webinar. So thanks, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. And we'll look forward to seeing your applications and welcoming you as part of the cohort in September. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.